We are live on Game Changers with Vicki Abelson. I'm Pete George, and our special guest tonight is Sarah Nimitz. It's a real feat that you have to overcome. <laughs> oh, you are the queen of the fun. All right. So, Sarah Nimitz. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, it just, it, 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 okay, I'm, I'm awake now. I'm good morning. I, I am good morning. I, all right, so let's find us so that we can, okay. we can, we can see who's top, so we can say hi to people. Hi, people. I, I, Chris, Mark Maxi. Hey. Hi, oh, Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, hi, Mark. Okay, so I, I, um, is Crystal on yet? I we believe have to, she's hosting a viewing party. I believe she is, but she thought it was 7.04. Ooh. Okay, so I have so to... she might not be here yet? She might not be here yet, and I have to explain my craziness to everybody okay, out there. Okay, I'm going to eat a Brussels sprout okay, while eat, you eat, do that. Okay, Sarah's going to have some Brussels okay. sprouts while, while we're doing that. So, hi, Rick. Um, okay, so Rick Smolke mm -hmm. um, is going to be your best friend, because if you need oh, anything done, if you need, like, stuff done for your liner notes, if you need cards, if you need... I need a guy killed. Yo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sorry. No. Rick's too nice for okay, that. Okay. He's the one that, yeah. that we did the veterans thing for. Because oh, he puts nice. together these PSAs for the veterans because he's such a good guy. That's but Rick great. is a printer in, in Chicago. He's a okay. Oh, you're and hometown. I'm in Chicago. Yeah. Rick, she's a hometown girl. Yes. So Rick has got this place called Quick Impressions in Chicago. Okay. And they are printers. And he did my tissue box. And, and like, you'll get to, nice. you and Snuffy need to be on my next tissue box. Yeah. Because you were at Women Who Write and he did my bookmarks and yeah. stuff. I love these. And he did, and you read. So you need a Bookmark. I do. Thank and then you very he much. Made my business card. So anyway, so so Rick is is this incredibly philanthropic, wonderful guy. He's never charged an artist to to print their stuff. He's so wow. wonderful. That's so if you need anything, so yeah, yeah. And he also. 
for anybody who needs anything done, uh, please call Rick. Except Smokey. for a guy killed. Well, except for getting a guy killed. Yeah. He's, too, he's too nice for that. We, I, have, I have another guy you can talk okay, about. Okay. Right. Also from and, Chicago, yeah. Probably, yes. <laughs> also from Chicago. That's very good. And then there's my hairdresser. Yes. Uh, Nicole Venables, who, as you saw, has a spray called, what did you call it? Oh, I called it a F heart cough. Uh, right, but, but I call it fuck off, but that's because Sarah's nice and I'm me. <laughs> but anyway, um, Nicole Venables of the Ruby Begonia Salon in Studio City, and I'm, and, and I'm having a good hair day. Your so, hair looks good. Uh, it's not a bad hair day, because it's not, you know, it's a good hair day. But, but Nicole always makes it, she always makes it good. She's, she's wonderful. So anyway, so, so now we did the business. So Sarah, okay. Sarah Nimitz. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, okay, so tell us about, okay, so you're new. This is C my new CD. I, you know, I don't. I like to call it an album, but this isn't an album. This no, is a CD. It's a little album. But we still call them albums. We do. You do. Still call them I still album? call them albums. Yeah, yeah it, it sounds more official. It sounds so, Pete, can you? Because it's an album. Pete, look it. Look can it. you can you put this in the look camera it. so people can see it? Because Get it's right. It's an album of music. That's why. Oh, oh, yeah, it's yes. an album of music. And turn it around so they can see. Yeah, the nice the nice picture in the back. So th the song that you just played is off. That yeah. is. Yeah, that is track one. I'm Get Right, Get Right is my newest album, 10 songs, a journey, a and musical journey. We're going to talk about that journey, and people can get it on your website. I, I put yeah. the link on the on the original post, and I'll put it up on the show when, when we conclude our yes, business here. Yes, but so, okay, so what's the musical journey that you were on Get Right? Well, I, I wrote it over the last year, and you know, without getting into too much internet depth, it was just a year, it was a year when it feels like 10 years worth of things happened in one year. There were health problems, there were people passing, my dog passed away, really? there was a breakup, there was just a whole bunch of stuff that happened. And I wouldn't want to live the year again, but it was, it was very, uh, I, I took a lot of lessons away from it. I, I love the message of, you gotta get right with yourself before you can be right for it. Yeah. Somebody else, right? Yeah, absolutely. Are you okay? So you're relatively young. Thank you. Can we discuss that? I just had a birthday. Yeah, and 27. Happy birthday. Thank you. So, so you're a Gemini too? Did I'm you a say? Scorpio. I thought you said My somebody, mother's a Gemini. You said they were Gemini. Um, Crystal's a Gemini. It was Crystal Crystal's a Gemini. It. That's right. That's the post I was um, See, now it gets, it gets stuck there, so I, I don't know what to tell you. That's Crystal, good. are you here yet? Hi, Crystal. Um, oh, now I see Snuffy. it all. Hey, um, Snuff. Hi, John. Hi, Joe. Hi, Pete. Pete, you're sitting right there. I am. Don't confuse me. Hi, <laughs> Eileen. Yeah. My friend Eileen is a singer-songwriter. She she played for us in the workshop yesterday this incredible song she just wrote, uh, which I, I want you to hear. It's like an anthem for women that I, I just love. Yes. Um, ben Moranis, fantastic. Hi, Norm. Hi, Rick. Hi, Tony. Um, Sarah, I know you have a lot of friends. Cool. There's Crystal. Crystal, look. Wait, look at Crystal. <laughs> look at Crystal made these earrings. And, and she made you earrings too, right? She did. Not, not these, these, but, but ones that I, I do wear and I have But not feathers. Yeah. Feathers? Are they, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I've got purple ones and then kind of a pink and black one. Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. husband is, I, you know, I want to say something about women that support other women. Yes. And I... There is nobody like Crystal. No. She is at every one of your gigs. She's she comes to every women who write. I mean, she lives in Orange County, and so she, driving to all my Hollywood gigs. It's unbelievable. And she comes here. Yeah. And, and she brings other people with her. She's a real champion of the arts. And, and of women. A, and of women. And of women. And I love women who love women. That's amazing. Yeah, so, a, Crystal, I adore you. AJ, spirit. hi. Michael Wilde. Hello, Roger. Roger Pig. You have an interesting name, Roger. Hi, Roger. Um, that he's a friend of yours, right? On um, yeah, on my Facebook page. Okay, and then hi Mark M. And he loved your song, of course. Who? How could you not love that song? The, oh, I see your mom's here. Hi yes. Cheryl. Hey mom. Cheryl and my dad, who's Facebook list, but they're sitting together. Oh, watching. okay. So I'm sending Sarah home with a little tripod for you, Cheryl, because Aww. Cheryl goes to Sarah's gigs and yes. she literally sits there. She sat at your gig. I know. And the entire show. Oh my She's got God. steady hands. She does. Yeah. I, she does. Steadier than my coffee. Look at my coffee hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she deserves a tripod. She, she deserves does. So I, a I tripod have like, at the very least. The only thing is if I give the tripod to Sarah to give to you, Cheryl, the light's going to fall down because it's, I need a sandbag. I have to, I'll buy sandbags and then you can have one of the tripods. Okay. I have tripods holding it down. So, um, okay. So, so wait. So what were, we're, we? what were we talking about? We were talking about the concept of getting right okay. with oneself. We were talking about birthdays. Okay, but get get right. So you went through all this transition. Yes. So, but okay, that's what it was. I was saying you're so young to 
have the concept about getting right with yourself before you can be right for somebody else. And yes. that's something I'm still working on. Me too. I mean, I mean that's, that's I, I don't think it's something that's a finish line. You know, I think it's mm -hmm. kind of always a work in progress, at least in my experience it is, you know. I agree. So is it something that what helps you what helps you you have you're very poised and you have you seem to have a good self-image oh, because you put yourself out there in a big way and if you as people did, in our yeah this crazy business you have to put yourself out there you know but you seem to embody it as the truth for yourself yeah. like like you don't look like you're faking it no so how do you shore up your self so that you are right with yourself what what is that what is that for you for me it's a lot of things i mean I, I think of it as myself for, you know, a foundation, having a good foundation to be on. And okay, so what's your foundation? For that, for me, it, it's that good old Midwest, you know, foundation. I'm very close with my family, and I have friends that I know I can count on and who keep me accountable. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to learn. I always love going into new situations, trying to see what I can learn from them. And so I'm not going in trying to be impressive or put on airs, not that I can do that anyways, but... You know, just to try to go into things with an open mind. And then my faith, too. You know, that really keeps me grounded. And, you know, regardless of what one's faith background is, mm -hmm. it keeps me in the knowledge that the world is not about me. You know, it's, there's a greater purpose, and I'm just playing my role in it. So I, I try to remember how small I am. And that's Staying comforting. Humble. Yeah. 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 Staying humble is important. Yeah. Um, and so do you feel that that you are at a place where you're right with yourself so that you can be right for somebody else? Yeah, I do think I, really I am. Like that. Um, I'm right for myself right now, you know? And tomorrow I hope to be more right with myself, you know? But I'm not... A work in progress. I'm a work in progress. I like it. And I'm stable, you know? I'm not gonna, like, smash anyone's windows or, you know... No start temper? Start screaming in the middle. No, I don't really have Even a Even temper. tempered? Yeah. That's really good. I think so. I feel like I'm on one of those dating tapes in the 80s. Like, all right, I enjoy uh, <laughs> making cold brew and reading Dostoevsky. There was, and, no, there was no cold uh, brew chips. in the 80s. I'll just, oh, I know. Uh, that's true. Okay, so cold banana coffee. chips. This is an allowable is thing nice. because they're nice. But I'm on paleo and... and I am the only person that can go on a diet and gain weight. So I'm on, I'm on this How long have you been on the I've been on it for like three weeks. And you okay. can, and I'm so like, this is kind of a transition period. Well, that would, that's really a nice way to say it. But I, I, I forgot to wear my ring today, so now it's making me crazy. But mm. you, want you, you can't thank you. You can't tell an ad, I'm an addict. But right. In recovery, I'm, I'm sober. Right, right. But you cannot tell an addict that you can have as much as you want. Of anything. Yeah. You don't do that with an addict. It doesn't work. So therefore, too much of everything. You know, if it's good, I want more. More is I, better. More is better. Yeah. And I want it now. Right. So, you know, I don't do the, the pot. I don't, I don't, that was my drug of choice. Okay. I don't do it. I, I don't do any of those other things. You but, these. you know, food, but Brussels sprouts. Last night I ate a big thing of the Brussels sprouts. But that's I'm okay. Way, I'm like the, you know... You do. I've seen you. You know how to chow down. I do. You know if there's a dog and you put a bowl of food in front of the dog, it'll just eat it immediately. <laughs> that's me. Like if you left me with this, I would eat this whole thing. Yeah, but that's okay just, because it's not getting in your way. Mm, thank you. Yeah. No, thank it's not. You. No, you look fabulous. <laughs> All right. So I, you know what? I've seen you perform many, many times, and I yes. know almost nothing about you. But I, what I know that is amazing. Is Pete humming. Peter, are you humming? You're humming. No. Look I definitely Pete. heard a hum. What, what are you doing? What, what, mm -hmm. what are you humming to? Wait, look at all the love that's had. So, hi, Zoe. All right, so I'm, I'm going to tell you a story later. But Zoe, Moon. my friend Zoe Moon. Is she feeling she's, void right now? She's the she's the astrologer. I was oh telling God. you about okay. She's like my best friend. <laughs> my best friend, closest friends. She tells me when there's a void moon. I don't even have to ask her anymore. But um, so like a void check. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of is. It's kind yeah, but see now there's no void and so everything is wonderful. Just, just now everybody can see us. Forth. We are there. So what, the reason why I made the show 2 minutes late is because there was a void moon and so in a void moon supposedly it's a good time to send in your taxes I was telling Sarah right, because right. things go under the radar. So it's not a time that you want to sign a contract. It's not a time that you want to buy a car. You don't want to buy a car. No. Okay. You don't you don't want to buy a house. You don't want to 
You don't want to go shopping and buy clothes. You can buy groceries. You don't want to buy clothes. Okay. Because nothing everything, that's going to be around. Everything's like you saw what was happening, and I was trying to post before. Right. Yeah. Your LinkedIn. Nothing was posting. And that's the void. But now we're out of the void, so it's all good. So Mary Ellen, hi, Crystal, hi, yes. So um, I, I'm getting distracted. But what I was saying is that I, I've seen you perform so many times, and I realize that I, other than what I've read on Wiki and in your bio, I like I don't. This story blows my mind. My daughter is 21. She just graduated from NYU Tisch. She wants nice. to be on Broadway. She wants to sing on Broadway. You did this at 10. I did. You yeah. did it at 10. Okay, so let's start. So you're in Chicago. Yes, yes. You're a normal little kid. Are you singing out of the womb? I started singing really early. Yeah, my dad played in rock bands in Chicago, local bands. I saw the picture of him. Was he a singer? Yeah, yeah. And so I grew up with a lot of music always around the house. My mom plays accordion. Pete! And... That was terrible. Wasn't it? <laughs> that was <laughs> an interesting. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> um, yeah. So and my That's mom like sang in the choirs, and yeah, no, she played the one with all the buttons, and you know, Pete's the dad too. Yeah, my mom has three accordions. She still plays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheryl, I'm coming for you. Yep. We're yep. Good. Okay. And she's great. So you know, suffice it to say, all. And when music. did you start? When did you? When did you start? When did it start it's coming out? More professional. Well, uh, not, not professionally, but when did you start like, all right, I'm going to like sing this song now? Always. I mean, I don't even have a memory of when it started. I've seen videos of me maybe being three or four, and I'd be sitting with my mom on the couch, uh -huh. and she'd be singing a song, and I'd say, you're not singing the lyrics right. <laughs> so I was like correcting her lyrics from a really young age, but... I wow. went to a, a BJ Thomas concert with my parents. Okay, and I that was story. kind of the beginning of how how old were you? I was four. So you were four. Okay, yeah. and, so, and, and this was was this at the Grand Old Opry? No, this was this like, was at the Chevy Chase Country Club uh, in Illinois. Okay, and yeah. so what we happened? Playing in Illinois, and my parents were big BJ Thomas fans, and they didn't want me to go to his show and feel bored, you know, not know what was going on. So they would always play his music in the car when we were going to daycare or when they were driving to work. And I got to know all of his songs. I just memorized the words. And we were sitting in the front row. And I guess, you know, I was singing along with everything probably. And they happened to have a little handy cam and capture it on camera. And I just went up. On stage, he invited me. I just went. Sorry, yeah, I, I kind of jumped. I jumped <laughs> the main point. The point. He saw this kid singing, and, okay. and he said, "Well, come on now." That was the, sounded something <laughs> kind of like that. And I came. He invited me, pulled me up on stage, and we sang "Hooked on a Feeling," which together. is an. I mean, such a great song. And first run for my generation. Yeah, yeah. and and I it was first run for me too because I grew up with it as a kid, as a little kid. And I just thought it was so much fun. Okay, so now this is your first time on stage? Yeah, and okay. this was my first time at a concert. First time at a concert, first, first time, time on stage. stage. I can imagine what the audience must have done. They you... were they were cheering, and, and it was really fun for me. And I kind of just thought, this is how concerts work. And you weren't shy? No, I loved it. I was just singing and, you know, <laughs> hamming it up. And we got to go backstage after. He invited us back, and it was... It was great. And then we went to the Steve Miller band. That was my next concert. Oh my god. And I was so bummed because I they said didn't invite you. Yeah. Up. I was like, so do when do I get to go up on stage? And my mom said, No, that, that's not how this works, you know. And I was I was really disappointed. So yeah, I, I was just always singing around the house, harmonizing with Beatles songs with my parents. Okay, so you naturally knew how to harmonize. Yeah, I, I think I just heard it so much, almost how you learn a language, kind mm -hmm. of, you hear it spoken and you kind of just pick up on it. I always heard my parents, you know, if there was a song that didn't have harmony, they would sing the third above or something, just finding harmonies. So it kind of became a, a fun thing that we did. So I, I never learned it, it was always just kind of second nature. The fabric of your life. Yeah. yeah. So, so mm -hmm. now you're, so, so you're... Five, six, yeah, getting getting up there in, in yeah. the child years, and, and yeah. Is the dream, like I wanted, this is what I wanted. Do you know this is what I want to do? Yeah, you know right away. Yeah, this is what I, I, I always thought this this is so much fun. You know, as a kid, 
it was something that I excelled at and you always take pride in those things that you feel you're good at as Absolutely. a kid. You know? So are you doing stuff at school? What, what are you doing? Yeah, well, I the St. Matthew's production of Oh My Dear, which was the village people and the deers that were moving into their, their neighborhood, I was deer number two. And deer number it two! Was, you know, it was really stunning. No, um, we yeah, all have those and, moments, though. Yeah, and yeah. I, I got in uh, singing lessons and stuff as a kid. Okay, so let's talk about that. So, yeah, at about so, seven. That's okay, so, so you know this is what you want to do. Yeah. Are your parents, they're on board from the beginning, like, yeah, we got to do yeah. this because she's gifted, so we've got to do really this. They were really supportive of it, and they knew that I just loved it. They weren't in the music business, so they didn't really know, okay, how does one do mm-hmm. this? So they looked up classes that were well rated in the area you know good singing teachers and then i got so you started taking lessons at seven yeah through a a vocal coach who was great who lived in our area Mm -hmm. so i went to her studio and and took lessons with her and i'm sure it wasn't long before you were out singing your vocal coach i can imagine well she's she's great hey tamra if you're if you're watching um she's really nice i do remember she had to tell me to stop swaying because I used to sing My Heart Will Go On. That was my jam. And I, I just loved it. So I would always be swaying while I was singing. She's like, you're not on a boat. You need to stop swaying. So it was nice, though. It was nice. So I had to stand still. And I learned. But, yeah, I, I got involved in, um, you know, Barbizon, those acting and singing classes. Okay, so I only know Barbizon is a modeling. It's predominantly a modeling thing. And that wasn't what I did because that wasn't really my well, you specialty. Could've. Yeah, but you could have. I was just too cheesy and nerdy. I was always just like, hey, you know. But I, I did the singing. I tried to do some runway stuff, but I was just not. I mean, not. Why? Good. I'm, I'm very clumsy. So, well, yeah, I'll save that for someone better better suited. Well, that, you have other gifts. Thank you. I mean, not that you don't have that gift. I'm just, I mean, you've got, you've got the look, you've got, you're tall, you're, you're oh. thin, you're beautiful. You could do, you could do it. Thanks. But you choose, you have another I, call. Yeah, I gravitated toward the other stuff. And so the classes, you took classes for a certain amount of weeks and then. Did you yeah. have to like put a book on your head and do like that stuff? We didn't do a book, but yeah, I mean, that kind of concept. Trying oh. to okay, I'm going to set up. Walking. And then you have your jacket time. that, you know, you would you'd put mm-hmm. over your shoulder. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Should I be looking at you or at the... You know, I, I look at the... You know, I know. It's, I, it's, I'm kind of blocking myself No, off. yeah, don't do that. Cheat out, yeah. yeah, cheat out to, the, to, the, to them because everybody wants to see you. So, wait, let's say, let's say some hellos while we're here. Okay. So, so hi, Cheryl. We, we already said... Oh, so, Bert, do you know Bert? I don't know. Where Rudolfo, Barry Lewis, Laura Frost, Frank, Joshua. Hi, Tom. Frank Alexander. does these amazing... Um, oh, wow, look, there's a little... Frank does these there amazing lag, yeah. artistic 3D renderings of nuggets that are... Oh, wait, we have to show nuggets. So tell us about nuggets because we're this here. This is nuggets. This is my chicken purse. <laughs> why, <laughs> Sarah? Why? How did this happen? <laughs> I saw him in Nashville in a shop on How Lower Broadway ago? probably seven years ago. Because this is like a signature. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really become one. I was with my mom, dad, mm-hmm. Snuffy, and my aunt. Yeah. Actually, I think I was just with my mom and my aunt when I bought it. Um, my aunt bought it for me, and then Snuffy says he came up with the name Nuggets. I don't remember if that is true. Is true or not? But if he says it is, I mean, why and would you steal that? And this is Nuggets number what? This is Nuggets number eight, which is unbelievable. Do you, and do you yeah. have like a whole ba- You have like a whole. I finally donated them because I I had this big pile of chickens in the corner of my room, and it looked a little serial killer So do you have, like, ten more for when this one gets a little fat? one more. And do they still make them? They still make them. You can get them on Amazon, Um, but the prices fluctuate, so I try to buy them when they're low. I just want to suggest to you, you might want to buy, like, ten of them now, because my purse with all the studs on it, I, I, this is number six, they don't make them anymore, and I, I can't. I, you can't be without, especially when it's, it's your, your friend. Thing. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's your my, thing. It's, it's your thing. image. It's your. It's my thing. So okay, so so you take singing lessons. Yeah. You know, I'm really curious about something because um, Pete and I uh, had Eileen Graff on here. She's she was uh, in the original cast of I Love My Wife on Broadway. She's yeah. a Broadway singer. She's fantastic. She was um, on a sitcom. She was the wife on Mr. Belvedere, and so she's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so she's a vocal. Co- she and she's not a vocal coach. What she does is she. She teaches a workshop called Make the Song Your Own. Okay, interpreting the song. Yes, and so she was saying that what she has her students do 
is they come in with a song yeah. and she has them read it, read it. They're not allowed to read it in the cadence wow. that you sing it. Wow. They have to just, just read through it so that they really understand the what the song is about. It, and you don't just fall into that da 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 And then I just found out she used to watch Frank Sinatra from the light booth with her father in Las Vegas when she was a little girl. And I found out that Frank Sinatra, before he sang a song, he would recite it as a poem wow. until he really understood what it was about. And so that's why when he sings a song, he makes it totally his own. Like he doesn't hit yeah. it, right? And, and anyway, and then the next thing that Eileen does is she has her students liken the song to something that happened in, in the yeah, singer's right. life. Wow. So that now when they sing the song, they have a very personal. It's personal, and then they're also not hitting the beat where the beat is necessarily always at. Huh. They're making it their own, right? Wow. Anyway, so I I'm like just wondering, that. like when you when you studied singing, like was there stuff like that? Like what what wisdom did your teacher give you? You did know, my um, when I came out to LA, I studied with an amazing vocal coach and vocal therapist too. His name's Robert Edwards. And he moved up to Carmel a couple years mm -hmm. ago, so I don't, I don't get to see him anymore unless mm -hmm. I'm up there, which is a bummer. But a lot of the stuff I learned from him was more technical. Mm -hmm. You know, we never really got very much into the interpretation of the song. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that probably came more from the acting classes, maybe more than singing. Okay, so when did so when did was okay, so what was the original dream? Was the original dream to be a singer songwriter or was it to be an actress? It was to be a singer. Before songwriter or actress or any of that. I just wanted to sing. I knew I just loved it. So it was always that. And then, you know, when you enroll in classes you see other classes that are available. So you see, you know, runway, I tried that, that didn't work. <laughs> you see acting and you go, oh, this is interesting, and then take introductory courses, and I found I really had a love for that. How, how old were you, when, were you when you started doing that? Seven. I ended up in acting classes because I wanted cooking and it was full. Oh no! And so they put me in acting class and it changed my whole life. See if I, I wow, could have been could a you, met, you could have been. You I know. could have been a great chef. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> and now been. you just read a bunch of Chekhov. You know? <laughs> I could. Yeah, I don't know. That that just went awry. Hmm. Oh, actually, I was. It, I did a bunch of Chekhov. Did you know the Good Doctor Neil Simon? It's a play that's based on Chekhov's short stories. So, oh, okay. So I'll have to turn you on to that. Please it's really do. cool. Yeah, yeah it's I'm very funny. I'm not up on Neil Simon as I should be. Sorry, everyone. But it's 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 about Chekhov, so okay. it's very it's cool. You'll you'll like it because it's yeah, very Russian, Russian, Russian literature. Yeah, Chekhov was a doctor too. Yeah, yeah, very Russian literature. So okay, so so you start taking acting classes, and yes. you're going you're going to school like a regular kid. I'm going to school, yeah. So I'm in first or second grade or whatever grade you're in at seven, and I was going into the city. We lived in the suburbs of Chicago, outside okay. of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So we went, you know. Downtown into Chicago to downtown. take these classes downtown. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the honking of the taxi cabs and the skyscrapers. Yeah, and I took those, and they kind of culminated in a showcase in LA, a trip to LA. Okay, so that doesn't happen to everybody. No. no. So how? Okay, so now. I just I just go with the flow like that song we see I'm just always like okay so this is where we're going cool That'll okay so what I'm trying to figure out like how much of this because your mom is really your mom's very savvy hi she yeah. is yeah she's she very was, savvy she's she a business woman that was her thing yeah. oh yeah well, international okay. collections for insurance yeah. oh okay so your your mom was she the one who was sort of navigating this path for you she was the one that figured out where these opportunities were you know because uh I don't, you know, I couldn't even log on to the dial-up internet at seven, of course. So she knew that I had this interest and this passion for this and then found different outlets. You know? Okay, so the first outlet was you wanted... Was singing lessons. Sing yeah. Oh, singing lessons. Yeah, because my lessons. parents' attitude about something is, you know, if you're interested in something, learn about it. You know? And are you also doing well in school? You're fine in school? Oh, yeah. Uh, like, was, great in school. Yeah. Of course you were. Because I'm imagining, like, it, so does everything come easy to you? No. Because I'm going to really hate on you a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit if everything no, no. comes easy. No, no. There's a lot of, lot of work, you know. Okay. Yeah. And yet, I'm sure you've put the time in. There's yeah, I mean, but I'm definitely, I realize that I'm really fortunate to have access to these kind of things, you know. Did and you have a family that, you know, they had the resources to, oh, we'll find this acting class and you know you can go take that for some people 
that's not an option, you know. Right. So it's definitely you have, you have like, gratitude. oh wow, I did this. You know, well, but you do also anything. don't take for granted that you had those opportunities. Yeah. That doesn't sound like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so okay, so what ha- so you came out to LA. How was that? What what happened? It was great. It was weird. I got to see what stage parents were. You know, because your mom is not okay. She's so not okay. No, she's not. And she, I mean, it was new to them too, because we're just from. A, Small town outside of Chicago. Okay, we're near so, Chicago, but we're in the suburbs. So, yeah. what did that look like, stage parents? Well, we. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit in the narrative, but after I moved to LA, you know, spoiler. Okay, I'm here. I, so, <laughs> okay. we, lived, we lived at the Oakwoods. And oh, we lived there too when we came out. So first. you know, there's a lot of kids, and the and Oakwoods parents. is not even the Oakwoods now. It's the something else. Oh yeah. yeah. So there were a lot of kids and just weird people there. Parents who are very, you know, there was karaoke night at the Oakwoods, and I used to like to just get up and sing, and you could see other parents kind of trying to jockey for a position for their, oh, you need to get up and sing, you know, and it was very grody. I see how that could kind of hurt hurt you a bit. So did you meet kids that really didn't want to do it, but they were only doing it because yeah. they were being pushed? Yeah, yeah. And your, your parents never pushed? No, no. It was all your life. I really liked it, yeah. yeah. Their attitude was always, you know, you can stop whenever it's not fun, you know. It was always fun. Did they, I can't imagine they ever encouraged you to do anything else because you clearly had this extraordinary you know, gift. They, it was always really important to them to do really well in school, so I took all the AP courses and did all the SAT prep and all that. Okay, so how are you doing, okay, so you, all right, let's, let's try. Don't be I'm, weird. Right, yeah, yeah, keep right, track. I'm trying to stay linear. I'm okay, trying to stay linear. Right. So we're, wait, so you come out, come out to LA for the first time. Yes. For the contest. Yes. And, and so I'm assuming that you won. I did. Of course yeah. you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what is that? Well, I don't think you really win anything other than a little trophy, but... I got an agent from it because there it's a showcase kind of thing. And you're, I was seven, seven, maybe eight. yeah, okay, late seven. And she got Push an agent up. at P. Yeah. Look it, <laughs> she had an agent at seven. That's gross. I know. I know. <laughs> oh my god. No, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. I, I hate the word awesome, but I think it's awesome. Okay, so so okay, so you have an agent. Yeah. You go back to Chicago. Went back to Chicago, but. At that point, you know, we, we all talked about it, and my mom quit her job because she also had a background in teaching. Mm-hmm. So when we went to California, trying to not jump ahead too much, her job, she couldn't move. Okay. Um, my dad's job was able to move. He oh. was a construction manager, uh-huh. so there's construction everywhere. Isn't that know? a good thing? Yeah, so his was movable, transferable. Um, so my mom was driving me around to auditions and all of that kind of stuff. And then when I went to Broadway and it got too busy. Okay, you don't just go to Broadway. We well, have we, to stop. We, we, we're stopping here for a okay. minute. Okay. <laughs> and then I go to Broadway. <laughs> Samantha, well, did you hear that? She just got to Broadway. No, the, ske- the schedule got too busy at one point. So I started doing homeschooling during elementary school. And my mom was my teacher. Oh, she was a teacher. Okay. Yeah, so, so she, it was, she was a real teacher and knew how to, she went through the district and we were very regimented. So was that, so how was that socially for you? It to, was, yeah, it was fine because I went to elementary school up until fourth grade. Mm-hmm. So I still had all my friends from, from then and we hung out on the side and. And did all that. So you never felt that you were lacking for that part of life? No, I never did. And I'm an only, well, I've got half siblings, but I'm the only child for my parents. So I love being alone, like in an only child way. I I love just spending time reading and just being alone. So I I had no problem with that kind of stuff. Okay. So, so, so you're in, so you moved to LA. Yes. And... You're in school, right? You're yeah. Sc- oh, but then you're not. Then you're getting homeschooled because you're getting busy? Right. Yeah, I... What are you doing? I played Carol Burnett in her show, Hollywood Arms, that she wrote with her daughter. And it mounted in Chicago. So I auditioned for it in L.A., but we had to move back to Chicago because that's where the show That's mounted. crazy. So I went back, but my parents at that point, we lived in L.A., so okay. I was just staying at a hotel in Chicago, you know, which was weird. 
Um, yeah, we did the show for six months at the Goodman Theater there. Jody Hamilton, Carol, another daughter of Carol's. Jody, hi Jody. Um, it is a friend, and she's wonderful. Oh my gosh. And and Linda Lavin. Linda like, Lavin. Okay, yeah. so Linda's played in the living room. Really? And he's like very close friends with with my stylist, oh wonderful my friend Craig. And so the others, six degrees over here. We'll I talk love about that. Linda. Yes, yeah, she was in in the play in Hollywood Arms. She played my grandmother, Carol's grandmother. That's crazy. And my rabbit died after the show, and I was this little cat was so close to my rabbit. I had it for seven years, and she sent me a condolence card Aww. for the rabbit. And Aww. that's I always thought she was sweet, but that's when I really knew she was just next level. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Nice that's extraordinary. Linda. Yeah. So okay, I'm sure she's not on Facebook. I'm. I'm I think I know that for sure. Um, yeah, her husband Steve maybe is is on, but yeah, she doesn't have Facebook or anything. So, okay, so wait, how do you get to so you do the show in Chicago? We do the show, um, you know, I guess it got backers. It Hal Prince was directing it, so I mean, Daisy, Daisy's on yeah, there sometimes. Daisy, <laughs> hello, yeah, Daisy's amazing too. So it, she it is amazing. It got to New York. They got a theater in New York. And okay, so do you have a concept? As I, a, as, as I a, mean, I can't believe how quickly that moved. You know, shows usually take forever. And do you? But you? I didn't realize that. That's you're not even ten. You're ten. No, I was nine when we were in Chicago. Yeah, and then ten. Do you have a? Did you have a? Did you know what Broadway was? Did you have a? No, not oh, not really. God. I mean, I love Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I didn't know that Hal had directed it. You okay. Know, I just love the yeah. music. Um. You know, and I loved Rent. I uh-huh. loved the show Rent. So I did love musical theater, you know, mm-hmm. and Cabaret, you know, and some of those classic shows. But Had you done yeah. any musical theater in school? No. You went too young. No, I never yeah. had, yeah. Yeah. And then the shows so that, like, just, my mom and I went to see Rent, and, you know, it's not really for children. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew all the lyrics and was just, you know, singing along and <laughs> just loved it, yeah. So my we friend went, David's player really yeah oh, maybe I saw him yeah maybe was there so so you're on Broadway you've never your first musical is on Broadway yeah yeah, yeah. It was, and it was how ridiculous quickly did you get a sense of what the the scope of what you're doing now I got a sense of how serious it was right away because even though I was a kid I mean you're expected to show up be ready to rehearse you know your lines I mean, and you're it's not nervous. very. No. You're, you're going out there on Broadway on a Broadway stage, and you're just yeah. That kind of stuff for some reason doesn't make me nervous. I mean, ordering at Starbucks makes me nervous, or like those kind of social interactions. You know, where they're like, "How are you doing?" I'm like, "Hi!" <laughs> oh shoot! Uh, you know that kind of stuff I find nerve wracking, but um, not no. on stage. Yeah. No. Wow. And so, how long were you on Broadway? Four months. It ran for four months. And yeah. so you're being homeschooled. I was, yeah. Um, and you're living and in had, New York? they had set teachers there because, you know, that's all very, very scheduled out and regimented how many hours a day and, and all that. We lived in New York. And then after the run was over, came back to LA. And so what, do you have a plan? Like, do you have, this is what I, this is what I want to do next? No, I mean, my agent was sending me out on auditions, you know, the, the guest star role here and there, which is how I met Snuffy. Okay, Snuffy. so tell us, that's, hi Snuffy, so tell us the story. How did yeah, that it was it was just Providence. an audition, yeah, for the show Providence. And I was playing this diva pageant brat, which was not me, obviously, but I'd seen a lot of that, you know, from my character study at Oakwood's. And all of that kind of so stuff. So did, yeah. did you, like, how, how was it with other child actors? And, and how, how, was the, how was your personal interaction with these other girls? You know, it was kind of both ends of the spectrum. Some mm-hmm. of them were really great and mm-hmm. down to earth. And were you, you able to be, have real friendships with them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple. A mm-hmm. couple. Um, and some people you could tell they just loved it and did what they loved. And then some... There was this weird competitive edge that you could sense even as a kid. You, mm. you know that that's not... You can't put your finger on it, but you can tell, okay, I need to stay away from this person. Your instincts uh, were good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I do have to Did it ever things. hurt your feelings? No, I, I never took it serious. I mean, That's like really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So no bullying, no like... No, I, I'm really lucky to never have had any of that. 
That's really good. Yeah. Okay, so so you're in LA and you you do the you do Providence. Yeah, you, I do Providence. And what it's happens? a singing role, so of course you're not singing live on a scripted television show. So you go to the studio to record it, mm -hmm. and I go to Snuffy Walden's Hi Snuffy mm -hmm. studio, and he was working on something like ten shows at yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't there for the session, uh -huh. but I saw him afterwards. Mm -hmm. I stayed around because I wanted to see him and. Cause you want it, cause you were already smart enough to know to do that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she's ten years old, and you're smart enough to know to stick around. You know, to talk I wanted to, the to, I wanted to meet him, and he was he was really nice. I got an autographed CD, which I still have. Uh, we didn't really get to talk very long; it was very mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. But I had his email address, mm -hmm. and when I was about to graduate from high school. Well, you were in real high school, like yeah, yeah. I went to my mom's degree for teaching was only up to eighth. Uh -huh. And I also just wanted the social thing of going to high school. Sure. And she was like, you know, she's great at math, but she was thinking, I don't want to teach calculus. I don't want to try to teach eighth calc to someone, you know. Um, so yeah, I went to high school. While you're in high school, you're still you're still working. Yeah, the first half of my freshman year, I wasn't there because I did a musical at the taper. So, but thankfully, my school was really good with working with the schedule. So how did that work? So you had. Tutors? What, what? Yeah, you had to have onset tutors. And since I was taking Chinese at my school, they had to have a special Chinese Chine. teacher oh my who God. would come and like. Can you speak stuff. Chinese? Yeah. Really? Like yeah. which which which? Uh, Mandarin. <laughs> Go ahead. Like me. Hello, what's up, Sarah? Uh, like hi, my name is Sarah. Uh, wow. <laughs> and I I my spoken Mandarin is not as good as it used to be because I used to practice a lot more. But I'm still good at singing in Mandarin. And I'll sing. Wait, what? Yeah. Can you can you do something in Mandarin? Yeah. Um, I'll just sing a cappella. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that is so beautiful. What did you just say? It's saying, um, don't ask me where I come from. My home is very far away. Um, and then she goes on to describe the, the scenery. There's the the trees that are so green and the grass and the blue skies and then um, the birds flying and this image of an olive tree that's in her dreams and it's uh, symbolic of peace. So it's just kind of So what, what do you think drew you to, to Chinese? I, you know, originally I took it because I, there were two, there were four schools in the area but the one that I was districted to go to mm -hmm told me they wouldn't let me out of school for acting. And it's just a public school. And they said, you know, if you miss more than 15 days, you'll fail your classes, you'll fail out. And I said, oh, you won't, you know, tutors? And they said, no. I said, okay. So I went to the other school mm -hmm. and they said, yeah, we'll work with you. We have actors that go here, mm -hmm. but you need to have a reason on the paperwork to transfer to a different school. So you would have to, our school would have to have something that the other school doesn't have. And their school had Chinese. They were the only school that taught Chinese in my area. So I put down the transfer paperwork that I really wanted to learn Chinese. And I didn't know anything about Chinese, but I really fell in love with it. That with is school. unbelievable. So originally it was just a reason to transfer, but I really fell in love with just the culture and the language. And you clearly I, took to it. I, I loved mean, it. And I had an exchange student that came and lived with us. Oh, and we wow. got like so, yeah. So Did you go there? No. Oh. They didn't have it the year that oh. I went there. But that's but pretty cool. I want to go to China. You've never been? Because uh -uh. you've been a lot of places. We're going to talk yeah, about that too. Yeah, never China though. I really want to go. That's like my dream to go to Beijing. Wow. They have really good duck. I've oh. heard. Have you been to China? No, I haven't. Oh. But I've eaten the food. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I've had the duck and I've had, had the duck. And, and Shanghai is... dumplings are about the best. Ooh. There's a place in LA. Okay. Din Tai Fung. Oh, the best. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that. that. Yeah. I've heard of that place. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And there's one in Shanghai, the same place. Oh, really? Cool. So, um, we're talking about food. Because mm. I'm on paleo. And I can't. I haven't had a dumpling in a really long time. You can eat yeah, duck, I though. You can I, eat duck. Um, I can huh? eat the duck. And I can eat the skin. They, oh, I the skin is the best. I know. Have you ever had Peking duck? 
No, I've just had chicken, oh, like the skin on a roasted chicken. Yeah, but Peking duck, they like take the, the skin and they serve it as a separate course. Mm. And it's unbelievable with plum sauce. I'm so it's sorry really to our vegetarian yeah. and vegan friends <laughs> yeah, watching sorry. us. So, but, but, but Sarah's eating Brussels sprouts, so she's an equal opportunity eater. Oh, yeah. Um, so while you're eating, let's, let's say hello. Hi, Peg. I love you, Peg. I miss Peg. you. Theo, Frank, Kevin, Joshua, Laura. Are these the same names I was saying before? <laughs> that would be I funny. feel like, hi, Ken. Um, Glenn Farrington. Hi, Glenn. Um, uh, who are the, um, if you see names that you know. Hi, Jack. Okay. I've known Jack since I went to college. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? And let me what tell you. What did you study in college? Really what was your... Time. I was, I'm, I'm an acting teacher. Okay. I was a high school drama teacher. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I did that for five minutes and then I waited on tables because I made more money and I was a starving actress in New York. That's but I sad that you made but more money work waiting tables. The, uh, what does that say okay, about the sad? education system? The, our system is... The starting pay for it, for it, it's okay. We let things drop. Because we don't have a dog. Get it. I'm going to okay. pretend that it's the dog's going to come and eat it. We don't have a dog. Is it blurry, Pete? It looks blurry on my computer, but it doesn't on the good. iPad. No, it looks good. Okay, okay. good. Um, you were a starter in New York. It, it, I was in Tucson, Arizona. Oh. It, that's, they had a really good drama. I want to interview you. Yeah. I think that would be much more interesting. So, no. But, but starting pay for a teacher, for a drama teacher in high school, was six thousand dollars a year? A year? Whoa! I'm old, but that's still crazy. Tiny, even any time. No, know? that's just wrong. But starting pay for a waitress, I was making fifteen to twenty thousand a year as a waitress, and so what did I choose? I, I chose that, and I'm yeah. gonna be an actor. Yeah, but anyway, that, that's yeah. The last one that they goes need to crazy further bit. incentivize so, people to want to educate. Th- that's right. Teachers need to make more money, and so that yes, no. exactly. So they will be. In so they'll take their talents. I like that word. word. You know? So okay, so so you're in regular high school. Yes. You're working. So what work are you doing while you're in high school? Uh, you... I did what work? Like what shows? Yeah. Or, oh yeah, I did a show called Thirteen, which was Jason Robert Brown's musical, and I just had so much fun on that. And during high school, I kind of started doing session work for um, different composers and started learning about writing more in high school. Kind of when did you write your first song? <laughs> My first song was when I was seven called I Love Rabbits and Pokemon. Oh, come on, let's hear. All I remember is that it ended with I love rabbits and Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the rest. But uh, I started my first real song. I was, you know, 13. Probably. And uh, what, what, what was your subject? I wrote a lot about Hollywood and a lot about... I had one song called Never Trust Your Eyes was one I wrote really young and they were all kind of like semi-jaded and cynical about like the underside of the business. Really? Yeah. So did you see... Okay. I really liked film noir too so mm. I think that kind of seeped into the right. So you, there's like a dark... There's a there's Yeah, but dark, not, not... I mean, yeah, you know, not dark, but 13-year-old in the suburb, no like serious darkness. But. So I want to ask you about this delicately. So was there any Me Too in your life? I mean, because you're a beautiful girl and you're in these situations. I know that Cheryl's and your mom's with you. Yeah. But did you, were you ever in a situation that... No, I'm really, really lucky to say I never was. Was it because no. your mom was with you, do you think? I think that was really helpful. I mean, I think, I think so she too. could probably see situations that, you know, certain audition calls that seemed a bit sketchy and you wouldn't go to those, you know? Or, or like, would you have to go where into, you would pick off a weird vibe, pick up a weird vibe off them? Would your mother get to go into the room with you because you were underage? Or did you yeah. go in alone? Yeah, I was you went in alone. You went yeah. in alone. Mm-hmm. And nobody got creepy. No. That's really a good were, thing. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, but you, you see it, of course. You did know, you know, you did it. you know what was going on when you were a teenager? No, I didn't become more aware of it probably until like later teens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so you do the show with the taper. What else are you doing during high school? Are, are you doing any shows in high school? I did one show in high school. We did the Fantastics at high school, you know, and that was fun. Uh, we did show. Godspell also. Nice. Yeah, those were the only two we did. Um, but yeah. Um, and you're still a great stu- and you're a great student. You're doing well. I spent so much time on score. Yeah, did you? I had one manager at the time whom I'm not with anymore. He ended up being pretty awful. Oh, uh, also, uh, very much BSy, and then also, you know, 
I, he knew that I took my studies really seriously and he was always really down on that, you know, taking. Yeah. Taking yeah. And I was just starting to do these YouTube videos and he thought that was just a stupid thing. And now of course, you know, YouTube ended up being a huge thing. Okay. So let's talk so about that for a minute because just, you yeah. have gone viral so many times. So when did you start your YouTube stuff? About 12, uh, 13, I started this thing called the living room series. Okay. Where I would just sit in my parents' living room with a camera and a karaoke track and I would sing along. And how did you get started, people to start watching you? How did they just found you? Yeah, I mean, I just put it up and you could put the best tags you could guess, you know, like Carol King song cover, whatever. And people just found it. Yeah. Did, are you savvy? Are you are you like internet computer? You yeah, are, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I am. And, and I was always really into that in MySpace back when that was a thing and Yahoo groups, oh God. which were a thing before MySpace, wow. you know. So I I had put work. So up you then. you had you you kind of had a natural Fit inclination a yeah. to you knew how to use how social to, media, how yeah, to and market how to yourself. There. And I think like a lot of people my age, and then especially people younger now, are just so good with social media and using it to connect with people. So I love reading the comments and writing people back. And oh, you know. I think that's requests. a huge part of it is being yeah. interactive with. Because you're very interactive with your fans. Yeah, which... I love that. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that there's still people that watch videos today that were watching them back, you know, you know, when I was 12. I mean, so you've had a channel ago. since you were, you've had a... Yeah, I, I think I had to be 12 when I set it up, maybe 13. And so when did video your videos start going crazy? The first one that got over a million was a cover I did of um, Rolling in the Deep, the Adele song. Mm -hmm. And that, it, there was this other teenage girl in Mexico who did a version of it, and she had a beautiful version of it. And then it kind of got into this weird thing where people on her page were saying, oh, Sarah's version's better. And people on my page were saying, oh, her version's better. And so people were going back. People were going back and forth, and I think that kind of drove up. That's the, good. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, all right, diss on it as much as you want. It's great. You know, people are watching it. So do you have? You know, we have a lot of artists, a lot of singer songwriters who watch, a lot of musicians, a lot of writers, actors. Yeah. Do you have any tips for people for how to get stuff viewed? How to get their videos viewed? I can no. I mean, I. What I, do you think you're seeing? I wish I had like, a secret talent. or a tip. I mean, for me, it's just been putting out music that I like, mm -hmm. you know, songs I like, style I like, and... Hashtags important? They tell me they are. I don't use them very much. You don't? I need to use them more. I've got some friends who are really good at that stuff. And just communicating with people and being real. Did you, you know? do it on your on your YouTube videos? Would you talk to people yeah, there as well? Yeah, that's always been a huge thing I've, I've done. So mm -hmm. just interacting with people and just being honest, you know, and just posting what you're doing on your day-to-day -day life, you know. It's kind of a balance. So, oh, so I'm, you did I'm, that too? You, talk, you talked? And yeah, I would do little vlog posts. Ah. Oh, man, I, I just got back from the Who concert, you know, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So just um, keeping putting content out and talking with people has kind of been what's done it for me. Uh, so how, okay, so your life's taken a lot of, Turn so so you get out of high school mm -hmm. and you've got a manager and an eight you've got a manager at and that an agent. I didn't. I okay. parted ways with that guy. We didn't want you to study. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. And I I was so all about just the SAT prep and and getting a high score and all that kind of stuff. At the end of high school, that's what I was really focused on. Did and you want to go to college? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I got into the schools that I've been looking at. Mm -hmm. And then I reconnected with Snuffy okay. at right at the end of high okay, school. Okay, so tell tell the story of how that happened. It's a great story. Yeah, so I I met Snuffy back through Providence, mm -hmm. and I had his email, which is at AOL, and hadn't changed. You know, <laughs> like like me, I still have an AOL email address. Yeah. And yeah, I just sent him a cold email, not a cold one, but like a cold call, mm -hmm. and said, you know, I don't know if you remember me. This is a show from my high school Christmas concert, you know, I just wanted to wish you happy holidays and... What was in your head when you did, what What was motivating that? I I was really into Friday Night Lights um, because that weird manager dude had actually recommended that I watch Friday Night Lights, which I think was like the good part of that. You know, things that seem so awful, but it ends up you really got something 
really beautiful. So every, something happens, everything happens for a reason. I think right? so. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So I was watching Friday Night Lights and I love the music. Mm -hmm. And I saw music by Snuffy Walden. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the guy from a billion years ago that I met. So I found his email from the old email address and, and sent him the thing and he watched it. And I, he really liked the video and wrote me back. And we met up, um, he and my mom and I. And how old are you? I was 17. Okay. But you know, I mean, he seemed like a good guy, but I didn't really know him that well. So uh -huh. my mom went and of you course. know, we, yeah. we were there together. And mm -hmm. as if he was fantastic and our families are really good friends. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so he said, I'd love to try to help you in some capacity. You know, if you want some kind of pop Disney career I'm not the guy for that I can't help you with that but if you want to learn about performing live and writing songs and were you writing songs at this point I was yeah writing anything that exists still that you that you still play out or nothing that I still play out okay. no it was kind of the beginnings mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. and he said you know if, if you want to continue growing in that way then I'll be with you you know for as long as it takes to get music out there you know for the long haul so he became my mentor mm -hmm. and we were working on music and putting music out and I ended up deferring all of my college acceptances, which then turned into not going to college at all, you know, but yeah, so we've been working together for the last nine years. So and so what, it, what does that look like? I know a lot of people on the page know you, but there's some people of mine that might we're not like, know you. Who so, is this chick? So, um, faint Chicago accent. No, 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 no. So, so for the people that don't know your story, so, so hi. Kelsey, my good friend Kelsey was in a car accident yesterday. Oh my Kelsey, I love you. I hope you're feeling good, and I'm gonna yeah. come, I'm gonna come bring you like chicken soup or something. She she's the one or that got me on. Or some crispy duck skin. Or some she got me on paleo. She can eat crispy oh, duck shoot. skin. You we can, need some peking duck. Bring her some duck skin. I should bring her some duck skin. So okay, we, we, Pete and Pete George is back there. Hi, Hi. Pete. Pete's gonna come out and talk to us in a bit, and he's gonna ask you questions that people have for you. People, if you have questions, I don't know yeah. if Pete's been asking you. I bet he has. But if you have questions for Sarah. Please, please put them on the thread because What's we're going to get... What's your social security number? Oh, <laughs> we're definitely going to get to you, to your question. So wait, so, so where, where were we? So what does that look like? What does it look like working with Snuffy? Yeah, like, like what, how did your life... Where did it start? I, I know where it is now, but wh yeah. what did that look like? So I would send him ideas of songs okay. and we would get together once or twice a week when his schedule you know, would mm -hmm. allow and work on these songs and write Okay, wait, what's your process for that? Like, for you, what is it? Is it the lyric? Is it the music? What comes first? Is it... For me at that time, I, I worked in a digital performer in Cubase. I learned okay. recording software mm -hmm. when I was in my early teens. And I like to stack vocals. So a lot of times I would stack a bed of vocals, you know, as a chord and then as another chord and sing over that. I did that a lot at that point. And then also with playing guitar. So usually I would just sit down and start singing and just try to channel something. I'll just start making up words and that don't really make but much it's sense. Most, it, but it's mostly about the music. It's mostly the music. And then I'll kind of look at what I'm singing and usually there'll end up being something there. Like there was something my subconscious was trying to get out. Nice. And I'll look at the words and then that'll take me off on another train and I'll sit down on my laptop and, and work on those lyrics and kind of go back and forth between that and the music. And so what's the collaboration like? So when you come to Snuffy with a song, what, what have you got when you come and what's his part? Yeah, it varies. I mean, sometimes it was like, I have this lyric idea and we'd sit down with that. Or sometimes mm -hmm. it'd be, you know, I have this musical lyric idea and he'd say, oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, what if, what if the melody did this? Or, or what if we went here in the bridge? You know, and we would collaborate on the song structure mm -hmm. and on the chords and stuff together. And then he always just kind of left the lyrics to me. He always felt like, you know, you should be saying what you want to say. Yeah. And we would work on the music. And so that's been, so how many albums has that translated to? It's two full-length albums and two EPs. It's a pretty nice singles. ride. Yeah. And you yeah. guys have toured? We've toured different countries in Europe. We've toured all across the States. Done a lot of stuff in LA, of course, you know. And uh, I had the awesome experience of getting to do some vocals for some of his score stuff with him. Fantastic. So much fun. Yeah. So what scores have you sang on? For him, there was the show, uh, 10 Days in the Valley, mm -hmm. that he did last season. Uh, Men of a Certain Age, I worked with him on this movie, which I can't remember the name of it now, but it was really good. 
and then uh, under the dome, and oh, what's the most recent one right now? Seal Team. And you've done other scores as well for other composers, yeah, correct? Yeah, I worked with Christopher Young. Mm -hmm. I, I did my first score singing session for him when I was 11. Oh my God. And that was amazing. I wasn't very good at reading music at that point. So one of his assistants would help me reading through the, the sheet music. How did you learn to read music? Um, just through books and mm -hmm. my mom reads music so she helped me too and I would get all those reading for dummies kind of books and like those kind of things. And then John Debney, I did some stuff for him too. So. Okay, so and how did Postmodern Jukebox happen? Postmodern Jukebox, I, I love their stuff online. I love the videos. I thought they were so clever and mm -hmm. I found Scott. Bradley, who did the whole thing, I found mm -hmm. his email, and I just wrote him an email and said, hey, I don't know you, but I love your music, and if you ever want another singer, maybe you'll consider me, and I sent him one of the videos Snuffy and I did, and he liked it, and he said, you know, come over, let's jam on something, and I'm always so cautious, again, I didn't know him, so I'm like, come, you bring on, your mom? come on over to Snuffy's studio, oh. <laughs> so Snuffy's got a great piano there. And he was awesome and, you know, not as busy as he is now, so we had the time right. to do that. Uh -huh. And we came over and jammed and hit it off. I was sure he was not a crazy murderer. He was a nice guy. So then I felt how safe old, going how old up. You, how old like, you 23. Him? Okay. But I was, like, super so. cautious. I'm yeah. really cautious. Well, no, you should be. Yeah. So until I learned karate or something. But, yeah, so... It was great. And then I went over to his place. He was still airbnb all around because he was always on tour and didn't really have a I set mean, home. I mean, Postmodern Jukebox know. is so huge. I yeah. have no idea. Yeah, it's huge. huge. I mean, we've played in over 30 countries. Wow. Yeah, together. And, and it's so much fun. They're just a great family of people. I just want to... Like, take a pause for anybody who's watching who's trying to figure this out. The Brussels I'm, sprout I, like, break? Yeah, you get a Brussels sprout uh -huh. break. Because I'm definitely getting this ongoing theme that you... I just bug people I don't know. Well, no, but it's, <laughs> what's really good is that you, you, you don't wait for things to happen. You... You go out there and you mm -hmm. get what you want. You, and with the internet, it makes it so much easier. You it know? does. You just send an email. No harm, no foul. If they don't like you. I mean, have you have you ever like gone after somebody and not had it not work? Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Andrew Bird, okay. the musician, and okay. I've sent a couple emails to him, but I never heard back. Andrew. Andrew, get yeah, with the program. I'm such a fan of his. <laughs> I'm like, shoot, I would bring water to the stage. Um, but no, I mean, I don't do it often. That kind of stuff. Do you think it's instinctual? Mm. Do you think or, like? Do you think like? Uh, do you believe in destiny? Yeah, in a sense. Um, how do you divine destiny? Well, do you think that we talked a little bit about everything happens for a reason? Mm -hmm. That there are no. I believe there are no accidents and there are no I mistakes. I believe that too. Right. Yeah. So that manager that told you to watch Friday Night Lights, mm -hmm. like he's the like. He's really the impetus so. for making that happen. Absolutely. Right? And I think that kind of stuff happens all the time. I do, too. I just too. don't see it, you know? I think it happens all the time. Yeah. So I'm just wondering. So I, I'm i a fatalist. I believe we're sort of on a path and things happen. It's because you studied <laughs> Russian literature. <laughs> yes. That's why you're in. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I believe we have free will to say yes or no to something, but I think we end up in the same place whether we say yes or no. We, we kind of fulfill our destiny, I think. Yeah, I, I'm always interested in that because I believe that we have free will, and then I also believe that there is a greater good and a greater plan. So I'm always interested at, in how those fit together because they don't seem like they would fit together, but I think they do in I, some I do, way. I do too. Because I know that what I'm doing is what I'm choosing to do. You know. And so, that, so that's we're going to go to everybody's questions and we're going to have you play a little too. Sure, sure. But, I, what I'm curious about is so in in the is the, is there a master plan like is there something you haven't you've done so much already is there what what would you love what is the what is the future if you had like your druthers like this is yeah. what I want to be doing I really want to find a way and I've got some ideas to integrate travel and music um, so a way to go around the world just interacting with different cultures and using music as a way to kind of unite you know maybe going somewhere and Snuffy and I have talked about doing maybe some kind of online show or something like this where maybe you go to to China somewhere and 
you learn about the folk music there. We might not speak that dialect of Chinese, but and they might not speak English, but you can learn about the music and then learn about the culture through the music. And even if you're not experienced in, in that sort of music, you can try to learn to play it. You can show them what American music sounds like, jazz and, and those kind of things, and just have a nice conversation with music. So it's not really flushed out yet, but I think that's something I'd like to explore more. So a friend of mine, Phil Rosenthal, has a show called, um, um, okay, um, I get confused if it's, I'll have a, Phil's having or somebody yes. feed Phil. Now it's called Somebody Feed Phil. Oh, but nice. But it's exactly what you're talking Without about. Without food? food. Yeah. But he, but I want to do it with he's, music. Okay, so he's the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. So oh. men of a certain age, Ray Romano, right. it was his work with Phil. Okay. So Does nobody know this? Um, I don't know. He I don't think, age. Yeah, he knows Ray, but I don't think he knows Phil. Oh, okay. But Phil, uh, he just got picked up for two more seasons on Netflix. Yay, Phil! Um, but Phil goes around the world, and that's exactly what he does. Yeah! Is he, he gets into the culture and the people, and he creates relationships through all around. Through the food. Through yeah. Food, and he's funny. So it's it's all of that. So it's ex yeah. it's kind of exactly what you're saying, but he does the and and that was his dream. Like he's had huge success with Everybody Loves Raymond, which yeah. is in every country, is he everywhere. A chef or what's the food? You can just no, he's food? he's a foodie. He okay. loves to eat, and he's skinny like a rail. Oh, but he but there. he loves food, and he really knows food. But anyway, it sounds like a very similar thing. Yeah, I would love. I mean, and touring, I already tour internationally. I'd like to expand that and do more of that. Um, I just have so much fun doing that. Snuffy and I just finished a tour in Germany and Czech Republic. It was amazing. It was so much fun. So I'd love to do more of that touring. And yeah, just keep writing. Keep learning. Okay, so speaking of writing. So you have a song, Monroe, that is, yeah. is like just a killer. So like, what inspired that? Where did that come from? I was never someone that was interested in writing love songs. I had heard so much of it and... I loved a lot of people in my life, but I never wanted to write a love song, you know? Did you get to have boyfriends in your life? I mean, doing everything that you were doing and being... And wasn't it threat, threatening to a guy that you're so successful? And I don't know. I had one. Okay. Um, uh, and this song was, I think, probably kind of inspired by that, you know, okay. when I wrote it. And I sat down and went, oh no, I wrote a love song. Oh, I started oh writing no, it, and it was the same it. kind of thing. I'm, I came up with some chords I liked, and I just started singing over it, and I just loved the O vowels of O, and when we're close, I feel like Marilyn Monroe, and I loved the way it sounded, but I went, oh my gosh, this is this is a love song. Shoot. So wait, you, it came more from the phonetics of the words than it did from the emotion behind Intellectually, it? it did, but I have to think but it was that the, I mean, it came it. from the emotion. Okay, so we have to hear it. Yeah, so I, I brought it into Snuffy, and I was like, ugh, I wrote, I don't think I should finish, <laughs> I don't think I should finish this. And he's like, no, no, this is, this is cool, you should finish this. Yeah, this, I, is, this is a really we wrote special that. song. He and I wrote the bridge together. Oh. I just wrote the verse and the chorus, and I was like, I don't know where to go with this. Oh no. Yes. Sit down the way. Please. This is uh, for those of you who haven't heard this. Wow. Put on fasten your seatbelts, as you <laughs> would say. Fasten your seatbelts. You don't see my face in the magazine. I used to 
hair gets lost in the clouds whenever you're with me. Oh, you should have known when you take my hand. in here yes. yes so 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 as far as your personal life do you get to do you get to meet people I mean because you're busy you know you're always you're working a lot yeah I work a lot I, I get to meet a lot of different people through working which is really fun okay. you know a lot of different musicians but as far as like you know time to connect going out to the bar to like meet people like that I don't really do no but that's creepy. Anyway. But I don't think I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah even if I had more time, I don't think I would do that. That's just creepy. Anyway. I've never done the whole online thing. I've, oh, I've heard your stories about that, and now I yeah, really don't, don't, don't want Don't go to. there. Don't ever go there. No. Oh. I mean, from what I heard from the story you read when I did Women Who Write with you, I am not not interested. Yeah. It's much better to meet people in real life. And you will, because yeah. your life is going to put you in all these situations. Well, like I'm saying, I kind of feel like, you know, things come when they're supposed to. I totally believe that. I've got two beautiful plants <laughs> at my house. That we're doing very well. Yeah. They, they don't die when you go out on the road? No. I. Uh, what do you do? My parents come by oh, okay, and, there you and go. take care of them. Yeah. Robert Plant. Robert is, Plant? Is the one. Yeah, Robert Plant. Robert Plant. Okay, yeah. that took me a oh, long well, I'm not even going. <laughs> Pete, you have to come out and say, Pete, look it. Yeah, come, you're, not, come, yeah. you're not talking come to us. He's, gonna, he's been really serious. I've been trying to make yeah. his like, I can't. You know why? Because he's, he's, not he's reading all the questions. I'm reading, I'm saving he's, the questions. He's saving the questions. I'm, but, I'm okay. but look at this is Pete this George. Is Pete. He's the rock and roll I, comedian. Woo! Hey! And, you're, and, 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 and by the way, sir, I don't even know if you know this, yeah. but the only reason that I know about you is because of Pete. Because Pete, that's right. Pete are. got in touch with me and he said, Do you know about Sarah Nimitz and Snuffy Wall? And this is really embarrassing. I didn't even know who either of you were. Yeah. I knew mm -hmm. nothing, which is so. I don't so, know who I am on some. No, <laughs> it, it's so humiliating. It's so embarrassing. And so when he told me that and I, am, I started doing the research, it was like, What? Where have I been? Yeah, that's right. Right. And, and I so saw you thinking, like, Have I been under a rock? I'm telling you, that's what I thought. And then you guys came, like, right, right, like right away. Then I got to meet you. And now, now I've come to, like, every one of your shows. Yeah. Now, and it's because of Pete. You were like, like I, She was, like, on the floor in the back. You were, like, just. I know. I was like blown away. Blown I mean, away. It, you know, yeah. as soon as I, as she you was told me, oh, <laughs> the queen of the fun. Oh boy. As, as soon as you, as soon as you told me about you guys, and I started listening to, you, I was like, okay, oh my god, like top five vocalists of all time. Oh my god. Like yeah. you're, you're, you know, because well, of Bonnie Raitt and uh, Lauren Nero and all those yeah, people. Yeah, Lauren Nero, all yeah, yeah, that yeah. stuff going on. So, yeah, just floored. So, mm -hmm. so Pete. Yeah. Pete, so what's coming up for you? I know you got a gig coming up. We so got uh, yeah. middle so, of July. Yeah. I am headlining the Grand Hotel in Las Vegas doing stand up, five shows. The rock and, and roll uh, comedian. Yeah. He plays guitar. Yeah, right? half I do half stand up, half my strat with all my effects pedals, and right. I do this history of rock, but it's funny. Um, and I was just invited. Get this. Um, in August. Look it. Look, look it. it. Look it. I am going to Mansfield, Ohio for the 25th anniversary of the Shawshank Redemption. This is crazy. And was asked to be Have part of the... Uh, yes. 
Yeah, I was asked to be part of the Q and A panel for the fans. So, wow, what's your connection with Josh? And I was in the movie. He's naked. in the show with yeah. Tim Robbins. Naked. Oh my. <laughs> it made me union. That's why it's called SAG. Hey, hey. another punner. <laughs> oh my god, this might be too much punning for us. All right. Oh so anyway, uh, yeah, that's. Couple more things coming up too, but that's yeah. yeah. Okay, so Pete, let's ask Sarah some questions. Let's take my glasses oh, wow, off. Wow, you got I got the screenshot. He's, he's I got saved it. them. Okay, he's got it. That's okay, one of my picture. favorite artists for years now. Yeah. Kevmo. Yes. Oh man. Okay, uh, so Kevmo. Crystal is asking, how did you get to write with Kevmo? I met Kevmo. That's a great question, Crystal. I met Kevmo through Snuffy. They're friends. Okay. And I started a song called Taxi Outside which was another one of my uh, shady Hollywood songs. And I, I brought it in and we worked on it together. Mm. So that was my, yeah, Kevin was great. Love him. Love him. I love the song he does with uh, Jackson Brown and Bonnie Raitt. Do that. I know what that is? Yeah. What, what is, is it? Is it a Kevin song? It's a Kevin song, yeah. It was on his, I think his first uh, album. Oh, man. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, Laura Frost, my question, what is your favorite PMJ song that you didn't sing? Wow. Whoa! That's, that's a tough. tough. Yeah, but, but that's, that's a real hard because a lot of my friends are PMJ singers. Uh, uh, uh oh. So then um, it's like you have to pick your favorite kid. That's I love them all for different reasons, but right now, gosh, how politically correct is that? Mm. Uh, right now, I've kind of rediscovered Christina Gotti's "Drunken Love" cover, mm. and I'm really enjoying that. Mm. I love her. Nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Sarah. When mm. are you coming to New Zealand? I want to come back. It's been two years. No plans right now, but I want to come back. I got to meet the coolest sheep in New Zealand. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I'm sure uh, Nuggets was very happy. Did Nuggets was and the sheep was a little jealous, oh, I think. Right. Like, oh, I'm not the only <laughs> barnyard animal. Sure. Uh, we have uh, David Minnick wish that you would come to Bristol, Tennessee. Yeah, I would love to, to come back. Uh, David wants to know what you were eating, which we've explained that. So. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. sprouts. I really wish we had watermelon sprouts. this week, though. Uh, I'm sorry. I've had more. I'm sorry. I let you down on the watermelon. No, front. you didn't. This I'll, is really I'll, I'll, I'll I'm enjoying the watermelon run for next time. But the Brussels uh, sprouts are going over nice, really well. They're nice and they're kind of crispy. A little crispy. They're, they're still, yesterday they were really crispy. Mm. I love the crisp. Uh, yeah. Sal Go uh, Gomez yeah. uh, makes a comment here that he missed your gig at the hotel cafe that we were at. Mm. And yeah, we'd love there. to photograph yes. one of your shows soon. I would love that. Nice. Uh, the next show, shameless plug. Go, go, yeah. We want to do that. It's July 6th at The Loft, which is in Camarillo. We went and saw you there. Yeah, That's right. we did. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah that's you a nice room. room. Yeah, great town. And good for taking pictures. Uh, Joshua Hurd says, thank you for your, and I love this, thank you for your geeky cheesiness. <laughs> well, I don't right. have my glasses. Oh, well, there. Right there. I was going to put my glasses <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Rodolfo says, "Oh, look! One of my future look! wives." Oh, look! What? <laughs> one, oh, one of my one future of, wives. Yeah, he's gonna have many. He's I think he to, meant, he's supposed I to say one. Of, well, I think he's supposed to say future ex-wife. Isn't that what you're supposed to say? That's what I say that twice. Way? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> we, we've never met. Oh. Uh, let's see. Who would you love to do a duet with? Ooh. Tom Waits. Oh, oh nice. man! Nice. Right? I can Tom hear Waits. that. I can, oh, with the voice. Yeah, I can hear that. Uh, would you do a Moody Blues cover? Sure. Just like that. Like the answer. Yeah. Like, do you have, do you have a... Is it nice and white satin? Yeah. Blues? I saw them at, um, at the bowl for the first, I had never seen them, and they played with the whole orchestra, and they did the whole, oh my wow. god, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I love the concerts with the bowl, or I saw Steely Dan do a concert Ooh. with the bowl of the first. Mm. Love Steely Dan. Uh, Sarah, this might get kind of creepy. Um, are you still living in Santa Clarita? Uh, I don't like talking about where I live. Yeah, yeah right? I, we don't answer. We don't ask those questions. There you go. I mean, and I never not like them. everything's not online anymore. Yeah, yeah right? I don't tell anybody where this is. Like I won't put the address. We're for on the moon right now. now. Yeah, I don't. Nobody knows right. where Women Who Write is. Nobody knows. It's in LA somewhere. Uh, maybe right. I had my earbuds in and I missed this, but uh, Gary Collins asks. Uh, did you grow up listening to Julie London's music before you ever watched her on Emergency? What? I've never seen Emergency. I actually what? didn't hear Judy London until about four years ago. So I was super late to the Judy London train. <laughs> there you go. I love her voice. It's very sultry. And uh, Jesus asks something in uh, Spanish that I cannot read. Oh. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. You guys, I know it says hello from Tijuana. 
Oh, good. Um, something about me singing. You're a very talented, talented artist. artist. Oh, that was that's awesome. Yes. Wow. We that got that. Great. We got that. That was great. Uh, let's see. Here, here we go. We have to find something else here. Okay. Hi, Sarah. My daughter, Brooke, went to Yes, Saugus we were choir together. There you go. Norm. Right, I'm, I'm going to see if I Yeah, see I live down the street from you. Excellent. That's cool. And I think that is it. Have you seen the new Pokemon movie yet? No, Pete, there's more questions. See, I found well, one. Well, because I'm sitting here and I can't <laughs> I want to, though. Okay. Um, my mom and I were going to go see it. Um, might you be coming to Nashville? I would like to. I don't have any plans right now, but... Have you... Uh, well, obviously, you've been to Nashville. You did yeah, that. yeah. That's where Kemmo and I wrote some, too, because Kemmo lives yeah. there. And, oh, there, there you go. And then the, yeah, we never outside. told the you never told the second BJ Thomas story. Did, did you come back around to BJ Thomas? No, we didn't come back around. we got to come back around. I, um... A friend of mine, whom I met online, uh, who edits my Wikipedia, thought it would be really cool to reunite DJ Thomas with my family uh, for my 21st birthday. Aww. So he reached out to his team, and they reconnected us. And I'd actually seen DJ a couple times in concert in the interim, you know, between those two big did you get Did you get to talk to him? And when very you, briefly. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, not very much. Did and he remember he, the little girl that he, he had said, yeah, yeah. Of course he did. So that was cool. Um, but we got connected more, and I got to go to one of his shows in L.A., and I sang with him there. And this was for my 21st birthday, and it was so amazing, full circle. Mm. And then he was going to Nashville, and he was playing at the Grand Ole Opry because he was working on a record there. Um, and he invited me to sing with him, so that was such a dream. And did you sing Hook on, Hooked on Feeling again? Yeah, yeah, we got <laughs> yes. to stand on that Hollywood circle from the original oh. stage, you know, and the sound was so good. Wow. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Wow. Was so cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so while we're, we're there, um, a couple of the highlights of your career just popped into my head. So, Ellen, Ellen saw your videos online? She saw them online, yeah. And just, like, she just happened upon them? I don't know how she found them. I had a couple people that followed my music online that said they had sent them in. I've never sent stuff into her, so I don't know exactly how she so found you it. So you just get a call? I got an email, and there was something weird going on with my email, and... I well, know. you're on AOL. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have your email. I was like, all right. But he, the, one of the producers reached out to me, and I couldn't fix my email. It wasn't coming through my phone or whatever, and I was on vacation. I never go on vacation, but this time I did. And okay, we're going to talk about that, too. Yeah, I was okay. on vacation with my mom mm -hmm. and my best friend, and we were staying at my aunt's place in Florida. And I finally got my email working, and I saw that four days ago – Three days ago, I'd gotten an email from the producer at the Ellen Show asking me to come on, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I didn't respond. I just got my email working, and then um, we coordinated it, and I got to... And what did you do on Ellen? I sang a cover of a uh, Black Keys song and a cover of a Bruno Mars song. Those were the two that Ellen had liked that she'd seen online. Yeah, and I got to talk to her. And, and so what was that like? So Did cool. you get to dance with her? I didn't get to dance with her, no. But I, I got to talk with her, and, and I just have so much respect for yeah. her. I love her. Did yeah. she scare you? No, no, she didn't. Thankfully, she's so into that. Yeah, she is. Um, but I just, I'm such a fan of hers, and we got to take a picture together. But she didn't have any makeup on, and she was like, "Don't post this. I don't like the way I look." And I was like, "Okay." So I just have it for me. You know? Sweet. Yeah, but she was so cool. And then how about um, Gilmore Girls? What, what Gilmore was that? Girls was cool. Um, it, we were doing Fiddler on the Roof. It was like a school version of Fiddler on the Roof. What, what were you? I was just one of the kids in the show on that. Yeah. I was Princey. The I had the opening line, and I think that was it. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, well, I auditioned with uh, "Do You Love Me? Do I What?" <laughs> you know, that's how we getting married. Yeah. Come on the town. Um, that was I was Goldie's just, song. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I auditioned that. for the girl that plays Golda, uh -huh. but I was just in the ensemble. Okay. Uh, but. It was fun. Yeah, I love, I love Fiddler. So wait, so, so, wait, how did this tie to Gilmore Girls? Wait, I'm confused. What were you talking about Ellen? I'm trying to remember what I network. Thought we went, I thought we went to Gilmore Girls from then. Then you said Gilmore Girls. Yeah. And then where we go from that? Uh, we were talking about Golda. We were talking about, I don't know how we got to Tevya and them. Okay, so this So now, and such a Jewish girl. Such a nice Jewish girl. So you look about as Jewish as... 
Pete does. <laughs> um, Do I? So no. Oh, I've been. So, look at. <laughs> look at. Look at here. So and then how did Glee happen? Okay, so do you, do you know Josh? Um, Josh. Jo- I mean uh, Josh What's Sussman. It? No, he, I don't. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. He has a really big afro. He's really. He was on Glee for years. Oh my gosh. And, and anyway, so you. What, was he one of the musicians or was no, he one he of the cast members? Yeah, he was a cast oh, member. Okay. Okay. So what was your Glee experience? I was one of the guitarists on there, so I did seven or eight episodes, um, just as a guitarist. And did you know Phineas? No. Phineas is Billy Eilish's brother. Oh. And he, okay. He just won like producer, like the number one producer, number one songwriter in from some thing. Oh, no. Yeah, a lot he's of in that family. Yeah, hi Maggie. Maggie's a mom's a friend of mine. Oh, hey. They're a they're a local family, and nice. they went to the local dance school that my kids went to. But wow. look at Billy Eilish. Do you like Billy Eilish? Are you a fan? Okay, you need to listen. But everyone yeah. tells me it's no, crazy. really. I'm telling you, it's it's transformative. I mean, everyone it's, it's totally it's unique. Incredible. Yeah, it's very unique. She's very unique. You're very unique. So, so is do you want? Would you, would you like to act some more? Is that something? I would. You? Yeah, it's it's something I haven't been focusing on lately as much, but I miss it. Do you? I do. Yeah, I've just been very much on the writing and, and performing lately. So, okay, so is there, so you were saying you don't go on vacation much, do you? No. So Pete's just playing, Pete, Pete's playing ping pong with uh, us. He's just I'm going. Just, I'm taking this all in. Two beautiful going, women, yeah. and, right? He's just going back and forth. That was very politically correct. That was so good, <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. It was authentic, too. Losing correctness. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It, it, it's not ripping. politically correct. That was sexually correct. <laughs> sexually <laughs> correct. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. I don't know. That sounded that wrong. It was, yeah. it was socially correct. That's right. It was Hashtag, socially correct. Hashtag why not me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So, so, don't go on a lot of vacations. Don't do a lot of downtime. So, what do you do for fun? What's fun? I, um, I love reading 19th century Russian literature. I like that's my thing. I have so much fun doing it, and then doing Duolingo, like trying to learn different languages and stuff. You know that free language app? No, I don't know about this. It's called Duolingo, and I did Babbel for a while, and I like that. But Duolingo's free, and so what? What like what are you well, learning on Duolingo? Russian. Yeah. Can I you mean, say something? Not very well. I, I'm like so slow. I mean, I'm better at just kind of starting to read it, but my Russian's terrible. That's wow. I well, you speak Chinese, so ago. come on. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Give but it I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but how about like out in the world? What's fun? I'm, I mean, I, I travel a lot with, you with music, mm-hmm. so that's kind of why I don't go on vacation, I think. So when you go on the road and you're traveling with music, do you, do you sightsee when you're in places? Yeah, I do. do I try to see whatever the touristy site site is. And, then and try eat the to food? Eat the food. I try to go hear the live music. Oh, that's good. So great. when I'm not doing that kind of stuff, I'm just super boring. I like to read. I like to vacuum my apartment. Uh, I like to write. I awesome. write songs. What else? That's about it. So you're working on the next album? I am. Yeah, okay. working on a new one. Does, does it have a? Does it have a like a theme, a feeling? It doesn't yet. Okay. I want it to. It's, uh-huh. it's not there yet. Okay. Yeah. Open to suggestions. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is it? Is it joyful? Is it? Is it, it is. It, it's oh, joyful. Okay, yeah. good. I'm feeling good. I like that. Birds flying high. <laughs> it's a new dawn. It's what do you do? I'm gonna grab some more questions. Okay. Okay. okay good. And, like, um, so thank you. You're always always working and doing creative stuff. What do you do for not work fun? Not work fun. So okay, it, work is fun. Work so. is fun, and all fun is sort of work related. Like tomorrow night, yeah. I'm gonna go. Um, Harry Nilsson. They're doing a, a oh, tribute yeah. concert to him, and, and Zach. Hi, Zach. I love Zach Nilsson. Is his son. Oh, cool. And Zach found out. Um, Zach was going to do Women Right. He was going to sing a song. He's not a woman. With, um, he, we have many not women. Come on, Steph is not a woman either. That's true. We have many not women but here. But boy, does he look great in some pumps. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Never seen that. But, <laughs> not um, wanting to see so that. So Zach was going to come in and he found out um, that he got, had his cancer. Oh my God. And so he's been doing chemo. But listen to this thing that he does. And I have to turn you on to them. He does, ke- uh, he does cancer rokey. And what? so every day he does karaoke, but he calls them cancer rokies, and he does karaoke on, on Facebook every day, and Whoa. he just kind of, he's just a beautiful spirit, wow. and he's not going to let that stuff get him down, and yeah. he's kept singing, and he's kept his, and he's got like, dye, I, I don't know what color his hair is today, but I think it's like bright 
It was purple. It was red. Nice. I mean, he's just got a great sense of humor about it, Gosh, and that's... he's got a great attitude about it. So his father, Harry Nielsen. Yeah. So they're doing this concert, and like fifty different singers, singers are gonna sing Nielsen songs and that's stuff. Amazing. And Zach's one of them. Zach's wow. gonna be there. And where is that? It's at Molly Malone's. Cool. I heard you tell the Molly Malone story. That's yeah. hysterical. I'll tell. I played at Molly Malone's when I was about eighteen or nineteen. And even though I was playing that night and I was on whatever, uh, they made me stand out by the dumpster <laughs> until five minutes before my set because it's a bar and I was underage. So that's just crazy. Just me in the dumpster. So what was that like playing in clubs all those years and being underage and then turning 21? Yeah, it was so weird because, well, I'm from Illinois. So we used to go, my parents took me out to hear live music a lot uh-huh. in Illinois. And that's when you could still smoke. Not like I was smoking. But right. You could still smoke in the clubs, Mm -hmm. and Illinois just didn't really care much about kids being in these Um, places. New York didn't. I'm from New York. Yeah, they didn't didn't really care, but we came here, and they were very strict about it. Well, first of all, you couldn't smoke, so that was weird, but nice. Yes. Um, But they were also carting you. Yeah, and they were very strict. If the place didn't serve food, when the kitchen closed, you had to be out. Mm -hmm. Oh, even though you're playing? Um, no. Well, when I was going to these different restaurants and sitting in and karaokeing, they were really strict with that. So I'd usually have to leave at like 10.30. But then, yeah, when I was older, going to places like Hotel Cafe or Molly Malone's, they would let you in. You just had to either have the big X's on your hands. or Yeah, so it was weird. Well, first coming from somewhere that didn't care at all to right. somewhere that did. Right. And then finally being able to go into these places just, you know, and now not even getting carded. It's weird. But never, there was never, you, you're not a druggie, you're not an alcoholic, you're no. like, but you drink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I drink, but um, that's about it. Yeah, that is it. But you never, never kind of got, got into any of the drugs or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good thing. Well raised. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. And I'm, I'm not interested to try it because I'm, I'm afraid I, I might dig it, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, don't go there. there. No, Pete, do we have any more questions? Yeah, uh, I like a question. Do you like? Uh, <laughs> I like a question. Do you like Bill Hader? I love Bill Hader. Who said that? Yeah, oh, that was a, that was what? a Pete question. How did that come up? I don't know. Seriously? Okay, because I love Bill Hader. Yeah. A lot of people know this. I spent like two hours watching like Bill Hader videos last night. <laughs> I love so Bill great. Hader. I'm My such a fan. <laughs> um, what's the um, Stefan? Yeah, uh, Stefan is the best. New York's hottest club. <laughs> uh, and his show have... Barry, I love. Oh, so fantastic! Oh my I, I went to Henry Winkler's person yesterday. Henry was gonna I, do. Yeah. I'm trying to get Henry to do I this. You get? I love him. You know, uh, Bill Hader's a big Dostoevsky fan. Is he really? He is. Yeah. How do you know that? I just read a lot about him. <laughs> wow, I like I that. Know. Okay. Yeah. In some circles, that's called stalking. Yeah. Uh, no, no, this is this is totally innocuous. Uh, it, somebody, uh, David Minnick, uh, he says that uh, he would love to hear you sing with a big band orchestra, which I would as well. I would love to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I just saw that question. Um, I like the fact that you could be alone as a kid, Sarah. Oh, this is Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Me too. I like to hang out alone nowadays as well sometimes. Okay. It's really nice. That's good to know. Um, What's your main inspiration, asked Patrick Reese. Hi, Patrick. Patrick, by the way, Patrick sent me a song today. He sent me a video. Patrick, I am not forgetting you. It's show day, so I was focused on Sarah today. But I'm going to watch your video, I promise, and I'm looking forward to it. What's your main inspiration? Do you have a main inspiration? Wow, that's tough. It Um, is. What does that mean, even? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would have to say as far as like a, like a songwriter I look up to or like something I draw inspiration from. My favorite songwriter, Paul Simon's a big musical inspiration for me. If we're talking about like specific artists, uh-huh. Randy Newman is a really big one for me. What, 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 when you were a kid and you were listening to singers, who, like you, I don't think you emulate anybody, but who, growing up for me, the big ones were uh, Janis Joplin. <sighs> Aretha Franklin and Celine Dion. That's a, that's a weird one in there for I, me. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a Celine fan. You're not. I mean, people no. are either. They are. They yeah, are. Yeah, I'm one of those Celine. Some people. But she's a brilliant she's got technician. technician. Yeah, she's got an unbelievable voice. Yeah. I, I um. Celine Dion. Oh, uh, that song, uh, the Kevno song. Yeah. Um, it's called Just Like You, and Jackson Brown sings a little oh. bit of it, and Bonnie Raitt sings a little bit. Oh my it's, gosh. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so Rick said he meant to mention at the Babylon Social Club show that he likes your new haircut, and it's reminded him of Susie from Cal- from from Calvin and the Hobbs. I don't know who that Calvin is. And Calvin, Ho- Calvin, Calvin and, and Hobbs, the cartoon. Okay, I, I guess I don't. Oh, that's, oh, a that's sweet cool. picture. You gotta send me that. That's really good. I don't. I don't know who that is. Um, any um, Orange County shows? Pete, you're dropping the ball on the questions. <laughs> Come on, Pete. Because they're gone. Look it. They're, they they disappear. Oh right yeah, I, I'm going down. Any um, Orange County shows? Coming Any up? Orange County? Uh, not right now, but I gotta get down there. Okay, so favorite TV show you're watching? Favorite TV show I'm watching. Uh, I loved Barry, but now it's over. Um, what am I? I'm not in the middle of anything right now. Did you now. watch Big Little Lies last year? Because the second season just no. came out. Oh, is that good? I really it, liked Killing Eve. I watched that. It, okay, I haven't seen that. Oh, um, Big this is that. Big Little Lies. It's Nicole Kidman and Reese Witherspoon. It's worthy. Oh, nice. And Meryl Streep is on season two. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. Well, that's I mean, really worthy. I really like Dateline. Dateline's a good thing to watch. <laughs> no, that's that's a, that's important. <laughs> I like Dateline a lot. That, that's Especially important. Especially with the Keith Morrison down. Um, <laughs> okay, wait. Somebody, I just passed a question that, um, will you become coming to Nashville? We did that one already. No, but somebody I just, naked. Peg is asking about naked. I don't know what you're talking about, Peg. Peg, um, it will come back to you. All right. <laughs> Um, I saw a question that I now lost. I'm sorry, whoever it was. Oh, where was it? It was by the OC shows. Oh, you'll be happy to know the Cubs won. Something. Oh, did they you win? Yes. I was, it was uh, six to three last time I checked. Okay, Good. They won. So, they lost so the last one. We, we, we need another song, Sarah. So, okay. So, when you were putting this together, like, do you do you have like a favorite song when you when you write a song? Like, do you get fall in love with something? I'm always really interested in whatever the newer one is, you know, because it's yes. the freshest for me. Uh, kind of one of the newest ones on this is Feet Don't Touch the Floor. Mm. So I have a lot of fun with that. Maybe I'll play that one. Um, I also have a lot of fun playing Made to Last. Kind of. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like that's a really fun one to go out with. Let's go out. Let's, Let's go, go out. out. Let's go out. Made to Last. So um, before we go out, uh, Pete think. was naked. Oh, <laughs> Pete was naked. What? Are they talking about Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, they are. Oh yes, he was naked in Shawshank Redemption. He was. That's oh, Peg's explaining Shawshank. I just went viral there. Oh, man. Um, two and a half. You were you were naked. You were two naked for two and a half hours. 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 Yeah. Gosh, good thing to know. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll say. It's, um, in the, it's in the excerpts. So wow. So, Sarah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. So I can't believe we've well, probably been, been on, on for a while. It doesn't yeah, feel like we've it. been on for almost two hours because that's that's the way we roll. Seriously? Yeah, it's yeah. like an hour and a half, more than an hour and a half. Oh I my know. god! I know, but the time flies, right? It really does. It time flies. And so next week, this is crazy. This guy, Steve Resnick, he his house is a, a rock and roll museum. He has every single forty-five that was ever pressed. Seriously? And he can access any one of them within. Ten seconds? How? Well, watch next week because Steve, we are going to be in Steve's rock and roll museum, and he is going to pop. Somebody's going to name a song, and he's going to grab it, and he's going to play it. That he was has a every, really good teaser. He has Sorry. every thirty-three, every forty-five. He has seventy-eight. He, he has seventy-eight. I want to say he has every LP, but that's not even possible. But I think he does. His entire house is a rock, and he has a Beatles he room, a and he has, he has an Elvis, it's huge. Elvis room, a Beatles room, I mean, it's crazy. So we're gonna be in his house. Wow. The only thing is, it's really dark in there. So Pete, one of us is gonna have to, look it! One of us is gonna have to walk around with <laughs> the light. The is the musical. <laughs> but it's really organized, wow. it's like crazy. Anyway, so Steve's gonna be with us next week, and Fred Willard, who uh, was supposed, thank you for filling in for for, for, I'm uh, honored. I'm so happy that you did. So Fred Willard's going to be with I us. We did, he and I were in uh, Enter Laughing together really briefly. We didn't even talk. Okay, we didn't even talk about Enter Laughing. No. And we didn't talk about Carl and the Carl connection. Carl Reiner, I love you, back. Carl. Me too. So Carl was in the living room. Um, it was about six years. It was before his book even came out. He was here with paper. Wow. And then he started his own. He could not get a publishing deal. Paul Reiner. Which blows my mind. Is that crazy? So he what started. What kind of world do we live in? It's wrong. Yeah. So he started his own publishing company called Random Content. Ah! And, and, and what has he published? And he has published Don't Jump, Sex, yeah. Drugs, Rock, Number. And he, he, I was the only one who wasn't in his family who got published on his. Um, That's amazing. 
Mm. On this. But but then Sarah ended up doing interlapping. So tell us a little bit about interlapping before we yeah, go. Yeah, interlapping. There's a, a Fiddler on the Roof connection too because the the guy who wrote the music for Fiddler on the Roof wrote the music for interlapping. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either until you know I did the show. Okay, so now you did the show first as a tribute. I did it. Uh, the Center Theater Group put on a staged reading of it. And it was to benefit Center Theater Group. So, okay. So we did that. It was a one night thing. It was really And it was fun. also a tribute to Carl. Was it? Yeah, Carl I think it was it. also his something his birthday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was a tribute to him. It was to private, you know, Center Theater Group. It was okay. great. And then we did a run of it at the Wallace, the Wallace Sandberg uh-huh. in Beverly Hills. It's beautiful theater. So beautiful. Um, I had to move down, you know, to Studio City to be closer though, because that traffic. If uh-huh. you live in not to say where I live, but it can be brutal driving down to Beverly Hills at, you know, yeah. 9 Beverly Hills is rough. Yeah. But it was great. And, I mean, the show is so funny. Carl obviously is an icon. He's just a legend. And I played his girlfriend. That's when so he was, you know, 20. I was his... It's so sweet. So how did you, did you meet him? So I met Carl um, at Phil Rosenthal. Uh, Somebody Feed Phil. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having. Um, Phil Rosenthal has a pizza and movie night. And um, he, Phil is an, um, an investor in Moza Pizza. Oh, Have you okay. ever been to Moza Pizza? No, but I've heard it's oh, amazing. Oh, you like pizza, you have to go. Uh, we should go. Oh, oh, yeah, except I have to be on paleo. Yeah. Oh, Do they have it. like a special? Yeah, I need a day off. Okay. I need a day off. Yeah. So on, or if maybe I'll bring, maybe maybe bring away Phil's Pizza should. Movie Night. Yes. Okay, so the chef for Moza Pizza is closed on Sunday nights. Mm. So the chef for Moza Pizza goes to Phil's house with all the stuff. And Phil has the pizza oven, like Moza Pizza, and they make pizza. And oh so I ha- I got to have pizza. And then Phil shows a movie, and he has his theater was built by the people who built Abbey Road. Wow. So it is arguably the best theater acoustically in every other way in the world. I mean, it's like unbelievable, the sound in there. And wow. it only seats like 25 people, and it's like couches, and yeah. it's amazing. And so I so Carl, I got to watch the last picture show. Did you ever see the Last Picture Show? No. The Academy Award, uh, Cloris Leachman, okay. uh, who was in it and won an Academy Award for it, and Carl, and Valerie Harbour, and all these famous people. So wow. there are times when I go to Phil's and there are 25 people there, and I'm the only one who's not famous. Oh, it's man. crazy. So I got to meet Carl So there. you're like a rare entity there. I, you're like, hello. It's like, yeah. I am not famous. Yeah, I am, <laughs> hello, yes, I am not famous. And I used to get to go every single week. Wow. But I, I now only get to go like now he has like a big list and now I only get to go like once but no, maybe still. I'll get to bring you sometime and I'd love to be your plus one. It's you could be my plus one. I'll bring it's, my Dostoevsky we'll read on the way down. Phil would love you and you have a you have a men of a certain age connection, so I'll That's tell right. him that. Yes. Hell yeah. And those he, two cues I wrote on that show were just so important to that They show. made the whole show. Yeah. But the other thing is, Phil always shows a music video before every movie. Okay. And so maybe he'll do a Sarah. That um, would be cool. Maybe he'll do a Sarah video. I'll have to send him a couple, and like maybe we can get you in that way. Like, oh, Phil should it. come. And, oh, that would be so much fun. Okay, so we'll talk. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, so so what are you going to play for us? Made to last. You're going to play Made, made to last. last. I love that song. There okay. Go, Neil. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> And, and where are they going to see you? So tell us where you're going to be. Like, yeah, everything shameless, coming up. shameless plug. Yeah. You can always find me on all the socials. So Instagram, Facebook. How, they, uh, that how do they find you on Just those? Type in Sarah, S A R A Nimitz, N I E M I E T Z. Okay. Spelling adventure. Brought to you by Poland. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so you can go there. And then if you want to see me in person, I will be at the loft on uh, July 6th. Okay. And then I'm also going to be out this summer for some dates with Postmodern Jukebox. Oh, cool. Where are you going to be? Uh, we're going to be uh, in a couple different places up and down the coast here in, in California. California. And we're going to be in Montana. We've got a one-off in Montana. Nice. And Snuffy and I are doing a jazz festival up in Woodside, California. Uh, Northern California, kind of up near San Francisco, I think, but uh-huh. south. And when so is that? Yeah, that is uh, July 14th. So if you go to my website, it's all on there. Okay. Yeah, and then we're probably going to be coming back to Europe next April. Nice. I've been really relaxed. Like, I realized I've been taking all these tempos really slow. I'm not looking for simple. If it's 
with Steve Resnick in the the rock museum house thing. Yes. And thank you, Pete George, Woo, for being back there. Me. And uh, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Thanks.